Hey, what's going on, listeners? This is Brother Leon, and you have tuned into the Brother Leon Show. We are in our series, 91 Psalms for 91 Days, and today is day four. We are going to call today, My Faith Speaks, and this is for the city of New York. So I want you guys to understand and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is with us even in this season, even as we are in this storm of coronavirus, God is faithful. And the one thing that I love about God is that he has given us a rainbow and that rainbow symbolizes God's promise towards his people. And so I want you guys to understand and know that there is a rainbow even in the midst of all of this. And I'm just going to believe God for the city of New York. I'm just going to believe God that the angels of the north are going to begin to purge and cleanse the atmosphere and make it conducive for healing. Because that is what we have to do as people. That is what we have to do as men and women of God. We have to lift up the standard. We have to stand in the gap. We have to make up the hedge and be an intercessor and pray for our nation and pray for our people. So this podcast is dedicated to the city of New York and definitely Governor Cuomo. Governor Cuomo, my prayer for you today is that God will begin to open up doors, that God will begin to strengthen you, sir, that God will begin to to enlarge your strength and give you the wisdom and give you the understanding on how to combat this because you, sir, are a deliverer. And so I want you guys in the city of New York, those who are prayer warriors, those who are prophets, begin to decree the word of the Lord and success for Governor Cuomo and the people that are working with him to get this thing situated, to get New York back on track and all the other participating states and all the other participating governors. We pray for you, but this podcast and this message, my faith shall speak is for the city of New York. So we're going to talk about faith today, and we are going to read the psalm, and we are going to pray, but I want to encourage you in your faith, because the one thing I want you guys to know is that God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. Faith is how we believe. Faith is how we walk when things are uncertain. We walk by faith and not by sight. I want you guys to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that we walk by faith and not by sight. And so, you know, the one thing that I want you guys to know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that Peter had to have faith to step out the boat. Sometimes you got to have faith to step out into the unknown and just know that God is with you. And just like Peter stepped out and walked on the water, he walked on the water because God was with him. And as long as he kept his eyes on God, he was good. But as soon as he took his eyes off and started looking at the waves and started looking at all these other things and started to pay attention and he forgot about his vision towards the Lord, he began to waver and he began to sink. But God caught him and took him up and they went into the boat. So we're going to talk about faith facts. I'm not going to be here long. What is faith? Faith is belief. Faith is focus. Faith is life. Faith works by love. Words feed your faith, whether consciously or unconsciously. So you got to take heed to what you hear. There is a spirit of faith as well as a word of faith. Faith is how we connect to God and the divinity within us. Because the one thing I want you to know, man, that he that cometh to God must believe that he is And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And how do you believe? You believe by faith. You believe in your heart. And I'm going to give you some scriptures. But I'm going to say that again. Faith is how we connect to God and the divinity within us. Faith is to be engaged on a daily basis to develop it in strength and resilience. And I'm going to read that again. Faith is to be engaged on a daily basis to develop it in strength and resilience. So you got to be able to work that faith out every day like you work a muscle so it can be strong, so that it can be resilient. So when the trials of life come, your faith is strong. Your faith is resilient. You don't want a weak faith for a hard storm or for a hard season. You want a strong faith for a strong storm, for a strong season, because if your uh, faith is strong, 
then you can outlast any storm. Because I'm going to tell you, man, you got to have different faith for different seasons of life. Because like I told you, life is seasonal. But God gives us faith. He gives us grace. And he gives us wisdom and understanding to maneuver through the storms of life. Now, I'm going to tell you this. You can't stop the rain cloud from, from, from coming over your head. And when the rain stops, but your faith, you know, the rain starts. But God can give you faith that you can have an umbrella that you can maneuver through the storm. And he will take you through and you will have safety and you will have comfort and you will even have that umbrella. So when the rain stops, it ain't raining on you because you have prepared yourself. You got the umbrella and you good. That's what faith is like. The faith life is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle of the believer. It is the lifestyle of any person that is in tune with their God-given divinity. I can't explain it no no plainer than that. So I'm going to say I'm going to say that one fact I said again. Faith is how we connect to God and the divinity within us. So we need faith. So I'm going to skip um the other one and I'm going to go down because I already talked about strength and resilience. Your faith will be tested at seasons and times Within your life. So you got to understand and know that your faith will be tested in times and seasons in your life. And you have to own your faith when it comes to everyday living. Because you can pretty much say, yes, God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. But you got to own that piece. You got to realize and understand and know that even though the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, you got to get to the place where it's more than that. Your faith has to be your life because faith is for living and you got to own that piece. Seriously, you got to own it. You got to own it like you own your name. You got to own it like you own your reputation. Because I'm going to tell you right now, man, a good name is priceless. And also, strong faith is priceless. And I'm going to say it again. A good name is priceless and a strong faith is priceless because faith is needed to live every day. You got to own that peace. When you are in a season of sickness and disease, you got to have faith and know that the prayer of faith will save the sick. And I just quoted you, James. Because the Bible says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if he's committed any sins, they will be forgiven him. And the prayer of faith, not only will it save the sick, but it will also raise you up. The spirit of faith raised up Jesus from the dead and it can raise you up. Wherever you may have deadness in your life, the spirit of faith and the word of faith is more than enough to raise you up. So I decree in the name of Jesus that the spirit of faith will begin to raise up the spirit in New York, the people of New York, the heart of New York in the name of Jesus. And you're going to begin to see the resilience of the people and you're going to begin to see the tenacity and the faith of the people because they will not give up because their faith is in the people because they call themselves New Yorkers and New Yorkers have a different type of faith, a different type of fight and a different type of heart. So New York, you rise up because God has given you a measure of faith. Support your governor, support the hospitals, support each other and love on each other and don't lose it in the name of Jesus. I just felt that 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 prophetic flow just came. I felt it in the name of Jesus. Faith is a lifestyle for those who will accept and acknowledge it personally. The opposite of faith is doubt. And doubt comes in many forms, such as fear, anxiety, and worry. So I'm going to give you a scripture. Romans 10 and 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So I'm going to tell you right now, it's the, the word of faith is the thing that we preach and we preach more with our lives than we do with our words. So faith has to be a lifestyle. You just can't preach faith without living faith. You just can't preach faith without any type of manifestation. If there is no manifestation in your life, you have no faith. Because it says also in the book of James that I will show you my works by my faith. So, yo, we got to manifest. You got to manifest. I got to manifest. 
if we call ourselves people of faith. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I'm going to say this. This is the definitely a faith fact. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And what does that mean? Faith begins where the will of God is known. When you know what God's purpose over your life is, then you know what the will of God is. The will of God is his word. The will of God is the promises of God, which are yes and amen. In order to live a complete life, and I'm going to give you some facts. Facts number one. Uh, well, I'm going to give you some some facts right here. Faith, uh, Faith fact number one. In order to live a complete life of faith, you have to give yourself over to meditation of the word of God. Your faith can't work if your mouth and your mind don't agree. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? That not only entails physical relationships, but it also entails spiritual relationships because you can't speak faith and your mind speak doubt. There has to be an agreement. There has to be a mind renewal and it comes through the word of God and meditation and also choice. Fact number two, meditation of the word of God allows you to become aware of your son of God nature. So the one thing that I love about meditating on the word of God, it allows you to become aware of your son of God nature. The word of God is your life source. So a son of God without the word is a son of God without life. We cannot be sons of God without the word of God. We need the word of God because the word is part of us and, the, and we are part of the word. So I want you guys to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, meditate upon the word of God. Meditate the promises of God. Because the one thing that I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt is this, is that meditation will increase and it will enhance your prayer life, when you begin to read your Bible on a daily basis and not just to study for a message and not just to study for preaching tips, when that thing becomes your lifeblood, then you will see that your prayer life is totally different. And even with the Lord has laid the gift of prophecy on you, you begin to see that you're proclaiming the word of the Lord and you're also having the word of God confirm it. So, hey, we have to meditate. And the one thing that I love about meditation is that it will quiet us and it will calm us. It gives us awareness, but it also calms us so that God can begin to speak. And that's the one thing that we cannot do without. We cannot do without hearing the voice of the Lord. Fact number three, when you begin to realize who you are as a son of God and what is available to you, you can't begin to even see yourself not living a life of faith. And I'm going to say that again. When you begin to realize who you are as a son of God and what is available to you, you cannot even begin to see yourself not living a life of faith. I can't say that no, no plainer than that. You're going to have to catch that. Fact number four, faith allows you to see the God in you doing and being what God the Father purposed from the beginning, which is to be a manifested son of God in the earth. Tasks change, jobs change, callings change, anointings change, mantles change, but the purpose of God never changes over a man's life. I'm going to read that again. Faith allows you to see the God in you doing and being what God the Father purposed from the beginning, which is to be a manifested son of God in the earth. Tasks change, jobs change, callings change, anointings change, mantles change, but the purpose of God never changes over your life. And faith allows you to see it. Faith allows you into that realm to see that things change and that God is a progressive God, but the purpose of God over your life never changes. Mantles change, jobs change. And so far we get to the place where we define ourselves by our tasks, but that is not the whole sum of us. The whole sum of us is the purpose of God, which is to be a manifested son of God. So let's go on. Fact number five. 
Your purpose in life and faith is to be a manifested son of God, being manifested in your community, showing them the expression of God. Every man is the expression of God. And God wants you to begin to manifest so that others may see that God is on you, that the glory of God is upon your life. They need to see the goodness. They need to see the love. They need to see the faith. They need to see the strength and the power by your faith. Because when they see you, they actually are looking at themselves. And a lot of people, you know, God has made every man his expression. God has made every man a son of God, even to those who do not even know it. But you are there to be the quiet wake up call. You are there to be an example and say, hey, this is what you could be. Because the Bible says as many as received him, gave he the power to become sons of God. In fact, number six. The biggest enemy you will face is the thought that you could be anything other than or outside of being a son of God. It comes in the form of, hath God said. And the biggest blasphemy there is, is to think that we could be anything other than, other than a son of God, other than operating by faith. We can't do anything outside of faith. Our life is faith. Our life is the word. And so I want you guys to understand and know, man, that God is faithful. He is faithful to his word to perform it. And God has given unto us faith to believe. Faith is our life force. Faith is the way we focus. Faith is the anointing. Psalms 4 verse 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, O Lord, makest me to dwell in safety. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you, Father, Lord God, that you are touching the city of New York. We thank you, Lord God, and we uplift Mayor, I mean, um, Governor Cuomo in the name of Jesus. We uplift the mayor of New York in the name of Jesus. We uplift the first responders, the people, the hospitals, the nurses. We thank you for the resources. We thank you, Lord God, that doors are opening, that windows are opening, and that the angels are preparing that they, the angels are opening, that the angels are breaking. I decree in the name of Jesus and I bind that spirit of sickness in the name of Jesus and infirmity. And I decree in the name of Jesus that, Lord, that you're going to begin, that the angel of the Lord is beginning to send showers, to change the atmosphere, to cause the atmosphere and the air to be purged and cleansed in the name of Jesus. Whether it comes through a rainstorm, whether it comes through snow, whether it comes through heat, we thank you that any in impurities, any impurities that are in the atmosphere that is making this virus grow, that is making this virus multiply, we decree in the name of Jesus that the atmosphere will be changed and that the people of New York will grab hold of this. And I thank you that their faith is strong because the angel of New York is fighting on their behalf. So, Lord, I thank you right now. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that the people of New York are strong. And I thank you, Lord God, that they have resilience. And I thank you, Lord God, that they will have restoration and healing and wholeness and soundness in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, angels, you make sure that that money is loosed. In the name of Jesus, loose the money over New York. Hallelujah. And thank God in Jesus' name that the money is loosed. That the red tape is cut in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the favor. I thank you, Father, Lord God, even those who did not want to give. I thank you, Lord God, that you are loosening up their hands to give to the city, to provide for the city in the name of Jesus. Amen. New York, this is for you. This is Brother Leon. I want to thank you guys for hearing me out and listening to me today. You be blessed. You be safe. And I'm going to say it again. Have faith. Be in faith. But don't be stupid. All right? You guys be good.